Coming up on Michigan Replay, it's a sad day for Michigan in South Bend as the Irish knock off the Wolverines. We'll have the highlight. We'll also meet a Saginaw native who's stepping up to a major role in his senior year. And we'll look ahead and scout San Diego State as the Wolverines get ready for the Aztecs next week. All that and more coming up next. Michigan Replay with Lloyd Carr is brought to you in part by Abso Pure Water, delivering quality bottled water since 1908. By Chevrolet, stop by your Detroit area Chevy dealers or log on to DetroitAreaChevyDealers.com. And by State Farm, providing insurance and financial services. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Michigan Replay. Not a pleasant day today. On Saturday, the Wolverines lost a 28-20 to 20 game at Notre Dame to the Fighting Irish. And, Lloyd, we were talking that you win the turnover battle and you win time of possession over the total part of the game. You win the third down conversions. But turnovers and giving them a short field spelled disaster. Well, we lost the kicking game. And certainly um, in the fourth quarter, Jim, we made some monumental mistakes that were just, in the end, too much to overcome. And the other thing that hurt was... Unlike the Miami game of the previous week, when you got the turnovers, you didn't turn them into seven points. You only turned them into three. Well, you know, we, we uh, certainly in that first half had opportunities, particularly at the end of the half, and had to settle for a field goal, and that would have made a big difference from a momentum standpoint. Let's go to the highlights and take a look. You get a turnover right away. Uh, Marcus Curry makes a great play on man coverage. Well, Jim, we had four turnovers in this game. This is the first of three interceptions that uh, we created. And the, uh, we start the game just like you'd like to on the road, creating a great field position for uh, our offensive football team. Then you go to the air here for a short first down conversion. Well, uh, we rolled, kept uh, Chad on the run. He made a good throw outside. Braylon went down and caught it, and that gave us uh, uh, a little bit closer field position. And uh, this kid uh, had a great day uh, kicking field goals. Yeah, Garrett Rivas hits that one, gives you the three to nothing lead. Uh, and your defense is doing a great job against the run early. Later on, they slip and Notre Dame gets the bleed some yardage. Well, Lawrence Reed knifes through there for tackle for loss, and uh, that uh, subsequently uh, leads to a uh, stop and, and gives us the ball back here. Again, on the roll, Chad Henning makes a great, uh, I don't know if it's a great throw, but certainly it's a great catch by Jason Avon. And then Steve Breston does a great job of getting the first down, so you get out of the penalty hole, but again, you can't convert and you have to go for the field goal to go up six set. Well, Garrett uh, knocks another one through. Great uh, protection. We had some problems a week ago, and we certainly improved our field goal extra point uh, in this in this game. Uh, someday you were rushing three here, and they kind of hit someone in, uh, in the zone, in the seams of the zone against you to get some yardage. Well, Jim, we're a two-deep team primarily, and if you're going to take away all the West Coast uh, timing routes, uh, two-deep coverage, you need uh, five or uh, six underneath sometimes and uh, so we've tried to mix up the rush there uh, we get a great play from Leon Hall to knock a ball down and uh, sub and again uh, get the football and play action we give up three plays in this game two over 40 yards one over 25 we got away with this one because um, Marcus Curry makes a TD saving tackle there. We hold, and on fourth down, we get some great effort in here. A great goal line stand to keep Notre Dame out of the end zone. You get a host of guys, with Roy Manning and Lamar Woodley, Prescott Burgess is in there, but uh, and Gabe Watson. Great goal line stand. We got a punt out of our own end zone, and Notre Dame's going to come up with great field position here. But uh, again, our defense is going to stiffen. This is where I thought uh, your defense was really kind of turning the tide because they got great field position. Great play by Curry interception there by Mundy. And you get the ball back. Well, uh, our defense gave us the ball back time after time in the first half. And here we put together uh, our best drive of the half. Uh, Braylon goes up, takes the ball away, and we've got great field position and time now uh, to use the clock and 
to get the ball into the end zone. Here Chad makes a good throw to Tim Massacoy. Tim gets us first and goal on the seven, but uh, we can't, uh, we have a, we lose a yard, three yards on first down, and then on third down we had a miscommunication, didn't get to run the play we, we wanted to run, and had to settle for a field goal. And looking back on it, that was a big play. At halftime, you're up 9 nothing. You really, for the most part, kept the crowd out of the game. Do you think things are going your way at this point on the road? Well, what we need to do is continue to do a good job not giving up big plays. And um, But, uh, Jim, yeah, I'd say in the first half, ex with the exception of running the football, uh, we did not do a good job again at running the football. David Underwood got hurt in the first series of the game, and that uh, certainly uh, did not help us. But we did not run the football with any type of uh, success at all in the first half. All right, when we come back, we'll take a look at the second half highlights. That's coming up next right here on Michigan Replay. Fell on this. You mean every game, every week? It's my new favorite receiver. Really? And big news from the Patriots. Tom Brady has a new favorite receiver. I thought I was his favorite receiver. Only Sirius Satellite Radio gives you the entire NFL with this exclusive NFL Sunday Drive. Get the NFL your way with Sirius Satellite Radio. I gotta get one for the cruiser. Now get $50 back with the purchase of a Sirius Plug and Play receiver and boom box. Michigan uh, led at halftime, 9 nothing against the Irish Notre Dame. And uh, one of the things that hurt is that you got the ball, didn't do anything with that first drive. Then they got the ball, and they make one of their big plays. And, and that kind of got the crowd back in early in the second half. Well, I think it's uh, one of the two or three biggest plays of the game, Jim. They uh, uh, were 9 uh, to nothing. hard play action here. And uh, there's too much time to throw. But we're in man-to-man -man coverage. Marcus gets turns around, uh, doesn't, uh, isn't able to get back and play the football. And now, uh, in one play, the momentum changes in this game, and uh, it really never got changed back. And that's one of the problems we had. It went back and forth, but we never could take the momentum well, offensively. You, you couldn't take advantage of, of interceptions like that uh, from Lawrence Reed. Uh, you just, and again, you get a drive going, you kind of get down there close, but can't stick it in, and Garrett Revis is forced to kick another kick. This from 47. Well, Garrett had a great day, and certainly this was his best kick of the day from 47 yards out. And uh, it, we answer a score with a score, and that was big, even though uh, we got three and they got seven. And here's another huge play. A muffed punt, but again, Steve Breston gets kicked by his own man. Well, yes, we uh, uh, get turned around there in terms of uh, where the football is. You've always, as a jammer, as a guy that's blocking, you've got to know where the returner is. And we lost sight of it. But our defense here uh, comes up with a big play, and uh, Lamar Woodley there forces him out of the pocket, and Scott McClintock has great coverage, and... Uh, we, we come out of uh, dropping the punt uh, without a score against us. And this one really hurt. Uh, Braylon probably should have had it a little high, but a tip ball interception, and they got great field position again. Well, it, it certainly uh, was one of those plays you'd like to have back. But here we blitz. We probably should have been up in a bump and run technique there. And then we get caught inside, and now uh, for the first time, Notre Dame takes the lead early in the fourth mm -hmm. quarter. Talk about momentum. Their crowd's really back into it. And then this one is just kind of a backbreaker. Well, it's hard uh, uh, to know exactly, but uh, they had great penetration from the right side. I don't know what the timing was, but uh, a big, big play. There's no question. Here again, we miss a tackle. And uh, now, it's uh, 21, 14 points in the in the space of uh, three minutes there. Yeah, yeah and, and, and again, I think those missed tackles, the function of the defense being on the field a long time. Well, it certainly doesn't help, but uh, you got to be able to tackle. And here we come up uh, with a caused fumble, but uh, we don't get the bounce, and they get it right back. But then you get the ball back, though. Here's the fumble caused. And uh, a lot of guys hustling yeah. around there. And finally, uh, Prescott Burgess, I think, comes up with the football. And uh, 
we got uh, plenty of time. There's, there's no question about that. And then uh, they come up with another play, a turnover. Uh, Jason uh, gets stripped of the football. They got great field position and uh, get it down inside the 10. And then uh, we let the back out of the backfield. We're in man coverage, don't pick him up. And uh, now it's 28 to 12, down by 16, and time is of essence here. Right, but you still feel you got the shot to win it, and you get some plays here from Braylon and Henny, and uh, you're moving the ball and make some things happen and make it close. Well, there's certainly uh, uh, a team that continues to fight here, even though the odds are against us. But uh, we do have time. We need a couple of uh, two-point conversions here if we, if. Uh, if we're to get back uh, to go into overtime and then here uh, good protection Chad makes a great throw Steve Preston uh, makes the catch which uh, we still got plenty of time here and uh, we go for two we roll uh, Chad out on the corner he hits uh, Steve Steve then managed to get the ball over the pylon and now we got to come up with an onside kick and with 227 left to go again momentum kind of in your way but you need to get this ball back I think you probably tie it, but again, the kick, it's, it's tough, those onside kicks. Well, you've got to get the bounce, and, and uh, we just uh, don't come up with it. And, but, Jim, you can't play like we did in the fourth quarter and beat a good football team. Especially when you're on the road, and, and they got the momentum going like that. And, and it's the turnovers and, and the inability, I guess, to run the football and, and give the defense a little bit of a break, get, let them sit on the sideline that maybe caused most of the problem. Well, our defense couldn't come up with a big stop uh, after we turned the ball over three times uh, at the short end of the field in the fourth quarter. And uh, you just can't not do that and hope to win. Uh, and then combine with the fact that um, we just couldn't run the football all day long. And, and that, it, it, that was one of those things where you look at the game as it's going, and, and in the fourth quarter you had some poor field position, but from a standpoint of what the offense was capable of doing, was it a function of the field position, or are you trying to keep the offense not as complicated with a young quarterback? Well, I think any time you've got a freshman quarterback, there's things that uh, we were doing a year ago that we're, we're, we haven't gotten to, and you do have to uh, do some things that uh, help him be successful, you know. And that's, we're not trying to protect him. We're just trying to do things that he feels comfortable doing. And that's why a running game, if, if it were there, would really help him in well, some regard and maybe open the offense up. Well, there's no question. I mean, you, anytime you can't run the football, uh, either you're, we threw the ball 45 times in that game. That's really more than we want to throw the football. And uh, we ran at 30 and certainly uh, gained less than two yards a, a carry. I can't remember the last time that happened to us. Yeah. And any time you're running the football that ineffectively, uh, the odds are against you. you got to get that fixed. When we come back, we will meet Roy Manning of Saginaw. But first, we hear from Pierre Woods, who talks about uh, an attitude after a loss is critical to a football team. Can't be down, you know what I'm saying, even after a loss or whatever. Strong man, you got to say enough, you know, on the defense, offense, the whole team, it's us together. So, you know, we, gotta, we all got to come back, bounce back from this week, look at the film tomorrow or whatever, lead out behind us, play next week. Every collegiate athlete goes through ups and downs during a career. It's the guys who persevere through the tough times that make a great story. Well, meet Wolverine linebacker Roy Manning. A knee injury cost him the better part of two seasons, but this Saginaw native never felt sorry for himself. Instead, he fought through it and became better for it. It was pretty tough. I remember waking up the first game I missed, and I turned on the TV, and the, the guys had just ran out and touched the banner, and I sat up there and got the tears and things like that, but I just fought through it, and I just, I just used it as a, a, a stepping stool, you know, a, a learning lesson that, you know, you don't have to be out here and just want to take advantage. During his time away from football, he actually helped out on the crew during tapings of the Michigan Replay Show. That experience helped him stay close to football, but not close enough. Yeah, I was ready to get out of there, get back there, uh, out there with my football team, you know. 
coming in and, and taping the show and things like that, that was okay, but I'd rather be out there hitting people. As a fifth year senior, Manning is now a major player in a very stingy defense, but he's also a leader and mentor to his younger Saginaw buddies, Lamar Woodley and Jerome Jackson, who are pretty fair players in their own right. I do everything for those guys. I feel like their dad. You know, I take them guys everywhere they want to go and, and feed them and things like that. And they're my little brothers. That's how I look at them. So we grew up together anyway. It didn't just start when we got here in Michigan. I've been knowing those guys since we were babies. So there's nothing new to, for me to just hang around those guys. It's been quite a journey for Roy Manning. He's living his dream now, a dream he appreciates even more because of the tough times he's overcome to reach this point. I just look back now and just, I'm like, wow, where I'm at right now, I feel like I'm a man, you know, and that's the big part of it. Just, it's not so much football in school, it's just becoming a man here. And I, I've made the, just the best friendships, guys I'll be with for the rest of my life. I make great ties with Michigan football and things like that. So it's been so much that has happened. And I just look back like, wow, it's all finally coming to an end. So I'm a little happy and a little sad at the same time about this last season. As a senior of this defense and a senior leader on this team, I want to just put it all together finally this last year and, and forget about the past and just end this career on the best note possible. It's good to see a kid like Roy Manning uh, survive all the difficulties and the troubles, and now in his senior year, his fifth year senior year, he's getting an opportunity to really contribute. Well, I think Roy Manning is one of those guys that has great character, and uh, he loves uh, Michigan. He's a very loyal teammate. And uh, there's no question, Jim, that uh, from a coaching standpoint, when a guy hangs in there, goes through all the ups and downs, and then uh, is playing his best football as a fifth-year senior, you know uh, something's been done right. Yeah, and Roy Manning will continue to play that kind of football and uh, take care of his uh, buddies from Saginaw in the Saginaw Valley League. Don't go away. When we come back, we'll take a look at uh, next week's opponent, San Diego State. They're good, folks, so make sure you come back and join us. That's coming up next on Michigan Replay. The Wolverines return home next week, and they will be taking on San Diego State. During the break, you and I were talking, and <laughs> San Diego State's for real. This isn't a, a team that you just got on the schedule to give you somebody to go out there and whip up on. They're like Fresno State. They're, they're beating up people. Jim, Troy State, you look around the country, and uh, you know it's, a, it's an amazing thing, and, and there's lessons out there. Uh, coming off uh, this game, we're going to have our work cut out for us to uh, respond to some adversity and, and to see what we're made of here. Uh, San Diego State, the, the Aztecs, as they're called, coached by Tom Kraft in his third year. Uh, this is a team with athletes. I mean, they got guys that can run. They Jim, eighth in the nation a year ago, led their con and uh, defensively, total defense, led their conference in three categories in defense, total defense, scoring defense, pass defense. I mean, they really come after you. That's Let's quarterback you know, Kevin O'Connell. They got two quarterbacks to play, and this is running back Michael Franklin. Take a look at that. Well, 8.4 yards carry. I, I would say that's impressive. I would say so, too. And Jeff Webb, wide receiver here. Actually, born and raised in Pontiac, and then went out to California, and he's another one of their great athletes. But the key guy is this guy defensively, Kirk Morris. A great football player. A great football player. He's a finalist for all the uh, major awards defensively, and a guy that uh, really sets the tone for him at the linebacker position. And Matt McCoy is their other big stud defender as an outside linebacker. And, and this is a team that is going to offer you quite a challenge, particularly coming off a game like Notre Dame on Saturday. Well, Jim, they lost last year in Columbus 16-13, to 13, had a chance to win the game in the four, late in the fourth quarter. So uh, they've been in the, these big stadiums in the, in the Midwest. They're coming uh, here to Ann Arbor after going to Columbus last year. And there isn't any question that uh, this is going to be a real test for our offense because of the, th the blitzes and all the things that they come after you with on defense. Now, and, and from your perspective, clearly the thing that has to get better, based on what we talked about during the Notre Dame highlights, 
somewhere, some way, you've got to figure out how to run the football. Well, we've got to run the football uh, more effectively than we have. I think that would take some of the pressure off uh, our passing game. We don't want to have to uh, throw the ball 45 times a game here. We want some balance, and that way uh, you can protect your defense and keep them off the field. Our defense played well enough to win uh, with the exception of a big play. But uh, they were on the field too long. There's no question about that. And we've got to obviously do some things to get better in a kicking game. And from the standpoint of the defense after the Notre Dame game and, and where you want that group to improve, game one was, was very good uh, against Miami, but big plays against Notre Dame. Those are the things that you want to eliminate and that maybe if there's one thing that's to where you work on? Well, there's no question that uh, big plays, you can't have a great defense and give up big plays. Uh, but with that, t I think if you take the entire game, the, the two game series that we've had here in uh, the first two games, our defense has played well enough uh, to be successful. Uh, it's offensively and in the kicking game that we've got to make some real improvement but defensively, we've got to prevent the big plays. And, and uh, the other question is, and I know it's a question that will be asked of you as the week goes on, uh, Chad Henney, your, your freshman quarterback, is the competition for the job still open? Are you comfortable with how he handled Notre Dame? Well, I think Chad Henney played very well. I think, you know, there's some things that he'll take out of it. But uh, if, you t if you think about two games, one, he opened here at Michigan Stadium, then he goes on the road into South Bend. I think uh, what he did in the last three minutes of the game was impressive. Uh, I, I would like to play, uh, I'm not sure what, what uh, uh, Matt's uh, situation is going to be this week, but I would like to play uh, Clayton Richards uh, at least some in there so that he can get some experience. But uh, we're just going to have to see. The thing we've got to do is uh, find a way to win a game here. Boy, that's the truth. When we come back next week, it'll be decided whether they won or not. Uh, join us for that one when the Wolverines and San Diego State meet right here on Michigan Replay. Michigan Replay has been coming up back and get back on track with a much needed win over San Diego State.